you observe the election? Did you go back there? Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it was very orderly. I think it was a very simple ballot, uh, unlike many of our ballots here in California, which are long ballots and have a uh, very detailed uh, listing of all the candidates. There are only two candidates and uh, two choices, uh, one and two. And uh, we, we, we watched them uh, casting the ballots, and we watched the uh, vote counters immediately after the election count the ballot. It seemed to proceed uh, in an orderly fashion and with uh, uh, due regard to fairness and, 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 and quite scrupulously. So it seemed to be a well-run election. Uh, of course, we only observed things in, uh, in uh, Taipei and uh, in, the, in the surrounding area. So we didn't go into the south. We didn't see, see we didn't make wide uh, excursions into different parts of the island. But what we saw was quite orderly and quite well run. Both the casting of the ballots, it was very well organized, and the, and the counting, as far as we could tell, was quite. So they held up the ballot, it was, so it was very transparent. They held up the ballot and uh, pronounced their verdict on it. This is, a, this is number one, or this is number two, or something like that. And this was written on the board and it was counted. It was very simple, very low-tech, and very, very, very efficient, very orderly, I think. It's very quick. These uh, polling stations are pretty small, so there aren't that many people. So you can get it over, you can do the counting quite quickly. From your observation, you would say that there's political appointees or representatives from both parties observing this process? Yeah, yeah, they were both, both parties were represented there. Did you observe the, uh, the tally process and how it was transmitted or faxed to the Central Election Committee? Or? Uh, no, we didn't see that, no. So that's, that's, that's possible. That, I, I don't know. We did watch, there's one other point, we, we watched the referendum counting also. And that seems to be much more confused, so I could imagine that there might be some greater possibility of error with the referendum counting than with the actual counting for the presidential election. Although I understand that the uh, referendum has not been disputed and will not be recounted. Only the uh, ballots for the presidential election will have been disputed. And they're the ones, only ones that are subject to recount, as I understand it. Well, yes, there were two uh, disputed areas. One was the number of uh, invalid uh, uh, ballots, or fei piao. Uh, probably around uh, uh, 300,000, as I understand it, uh, invalid ballots. No, I mean the referendum. Like oh, the, oh do, excuse me. Do, do you feel that the referendum ballots, there's some question to the validity of the outcome of that also? The, the referendum? Well, just the counting procedure seemed to be much more confused. It, it, they didn't seem to uh, have the, they didn't have, seem to have a very good system down for counting them. And so I can, uh, I'm not saying that there was fraud involved or irregularities, but I think there's much more likelihood that there could have been mistakes uh, in the uh, referendum counting. Well, there are two referendums. And uh, I don't know, just, it was just, uh, I can't remember exactly the, the details, but I just, uh, the uh, procedures for counting them didn't, didn't seem to be that clearly stated and clearly organized. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it struck me as being somewhat, uh, that the, the actual counters were somewhat confused about what they were doing. I don't know exactly why. For example, at a, a particular polling station, there would be perhaps 400 votes for um, the uh, blue side and um, pan blue camp, and then 200 for the pan green camp. And then when the figures were faxed into the CEC, they were reversed. Oh, um, really? Yes. Mm. Are, are you familiar with this? No, I didn't know that. Accusation or no, allegation? No, I didn't hear that. But you didn't observe any of the faxing procedures? No, we didn't did. see them faxed in. <laughs> no. Okay. We just saw them count the ballots. Yeah, okay. We had um, no opportunity to see them faxed. Because I, I, from my reading and, and from what I've heard, uh, yes, neutral observers such as yourself have stated that it was a clear and transparent process, but some of the voting irregularities and allegations um, I don't believe that it's just about how the um, ballots were counted. Counted, yeah. yeah. For example, one person told me they went to a polling station and um, they, they said that there's no, there was no political appointee from both sides at at that polling station. It's just like local people working there, mm. you know. So, so there's no way to uh, check up on like if things are being done, you know. Correctly. So yeah, uh, but. 
no one is disputing that the ballots were counted. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, were the ballots casted in the first place? Mm -hmm. you know? Well, there were two things. There was an unusually large number of uh, invalid ballots, or fake about 330,000, I understand. And that was much higher than the 2000 election. So that is uh, calls, and, there was, and, he, and of course, uh, Chen Shui-bian won by only 29,000 votes. So if the, uh, even a small proportion of the invalid ballots were are found to be uh, to be valid or in and 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 blue, <laughs> that would uh, change the whole change the whole election. And uh, uh, the other thing is that uh, the uh, we noticed when they were counting the ballots, we were watching on, t on we were watching there in, in Taipei uh, that uh, in the early part of the evening, uh, the blue camp had a, a continual lead, a slight lead. And then there is a certain period of time in the, around seven or eight o'clock uh, when there weren't any results coming in. And then they resumed with the results after that period of time and the green was ahead and the green stayed ahead the rest of the evening. So we were, we were wondering what, what was going on there. It was a little strange. Uh, they said that they had to get the results in from the southern part of the island. So maybe that was the reason that the, the green suddenly leapt ahead without any sort of explanation. It was kind of strange. I don't know. We, we, what to make of it? The uh, southern counties were uh, still being tallied up, or I think that was it. Yeah. Um, because I heard that the um, that it was the northern counties, um, some of the more northern counties, um, were the ones that came in after that long waiting period. Is that right? That's what I heard. I see. Well, I could I could have heard wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, of, of course, I'm gonna look into this when uh -huh. I go back to that one. But like, it, it just. Like uh, that seems, if that is true, that seems a little odd to me that the green camp could jump over the blue camp. Right, in the northern north counties, northern right. Northern counties, yeah. That seems very odd. One. Yeah, yeah, that seems odd. Yeah. And then, of course, the other big irregularity was the uh, assassination attempt. <laughs> okay, let's, we'll get into let's that the, later. Let, let, let's let leave that alone. <laughs> that was your, that was all you observed? Personally? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably pretty typical. Where were you on the day of? March 19th on this. Uh, we went to this little uh, village in north of Taipei. Uh, what's it called? Uh, I can't think of it. Anyway, Danzui. Yeah, we went to Danzui. Uh, very lovely village. And uh, so, yeah, we went to Danzui and, and, and just sort of walked around and saw, saw people. Uh, you know, I hadn't, I'd been to Danzui before, but we all went up there and, and, and just walked around. It was basically a tourist jaunt. So you were in Danzui when the shooting happened? Or? Uh, yeah, I think so. We, or might, we might have been on the way home. We came home in the afternoon. It, came, it happened probably, I think, in the late afternoon, as I recall. We were on the, I th remember being in the bus, yeah, so, yeah. We might have gotten the news a little late, maybe two or three, something like that. Could you describe the group that you were with? Yeah, this is a group of uh, West, Western, uh, specifically California, and, and I think Nevada. There are some people from Nevada, but Western region, uh, uh, people who'd come to observe the election. Uh, there were academics there. Uh, in fact, I think the majority of them were academics, but there were also uh, prominent political officials and uh, and so forth who'd come to observe the election. Did this group have to make any kind of report of findings to, to anyone? No. Uh, uh, not that I know of. The idea was that when we went back, we would uh, take the opportunity to report what we'd seen. But there was no formal reporting requirement. I mean, we didn't have to s write a paper or submit a, a formal report. That I, you know, we were never asked to do that. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was just uh, somebody heard on the radio or something. And so, uh, what was the general response to? Oh, well, we were amazed. I mean, we uh, we couldn't. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, we wondered whether he was uh, seriously wounded. That was a good first question, of course, whether, there, whether it was a how serious assassination, an assassination attempt it was. And then we learned that uh, apparently he was not in any serious danger. Uh, and uh, the more we heard, the uh, stranger the, 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 the uh, incident appeared. Uh, we heard all sorts of stories. And of course, the uh, uh, stories we heard reflected the biases of the people who told the stories. The, uh, the people who were sympathetic to the blues were extremely suspicious of the whole incident. 
they said that they'd heard the day before that there would be something appear just the day before the election, that this is what the DPP always did, something just before the election, they came up with something like this to pull the thing out of the bag. And the uh, Greens, of course, uh, the people who were some of the Greens, uh, thought that the Blues were uh, behaving outrageously and uh, to throw any sort of doubt on this whole incident was very unpatriotic and <laughs> showed them to be completely biased and lost touch with the reality and so forth. So there was quite a, quite a different uh, reaction to it. But the whole story as it came in seemed uh, quite uh, bizarre and quite uh, uh, strange. I mean, that uh, uh, he was shot in his hometown where uh, the support for the Greens is very strong, it seemed to be a little bizarre, and that uh, the wounds were both superficial, although they were point, uh, fired from very close, close range, uh, that the gun was underpowered apparently, and that the <laughs> Both of the bullets were found in the, in the immediate vicinity, but that the uh, assassin, the attempted assassin, uh, could never be found. He made a completely clean getaway, that they'd taken him to the wrong hospital for his treatment and so forth. Uh, it all seemed very, uh, very strange. But in reflection, I've personally come to the conclusion that uh, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. And it probably was a genuine assassination attempt. It would be too risky, I think, for anybody to try to fake an assassination attempt. You might kill a, kill a person. That would be too much, too much risk to take. Have you uh, looked at uh, Dr. Henry Lee's uh, reports? On I heard them reported on the, on the television. And uh, he was very cautious, I think. I mean, he said that uh, there was a shot, and he was wounded, and that uh, so for, that was that was correct. He could he said he couldn't comment on the other allegations that had been made, and, as I understand it. So I think it was a very cautious uh, cautious report, as it probably should have been. That's all I heard. Oh, he's going to make for, for further investigations after May twentieth. No, I mean, the, the report is not the full report is not going to come out until after the inauguration. Oh. He made that very clear. I'm not oh, going to like say one thing or another before the inauguration. I see. And and I do understand that he works for the State Department of the United States. I which, see. Which I, I, I feel, you see, my, my general thought was that, like, I knew that um, President Chen knew that Dr. Henry Lee would investigate this, mm -hmm. because in the March 23rd address, he says, I have no objection to Dr. Henry Lee mm -hmm. <laughs> investigating this, and then I was, like, kind of worried, I was like, oh, okay, but I also know that, you know, if he works for the United States, then I'm just thinking that he works for the United States, so. Well, he's from Taiwanese background, as I understand it. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, he's. Oh, yeah, he's an American, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's working... For the United States. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it just... He's, he's in a very interesting position. position. That's yeah. all I have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but... Uh, he's a very highly respected ballistics expert. He testified in the uh, O.J. Simpson trial. This, the two, I guess, pl most plausible stories I've heard is that maybe gambling interests were involved, that somebody uh, wanted to make a shot at him uh, to skew the odds in the election to make a lot of money in gambling. I think that's probably a plausible case. And they didn't care whether he was uh, killed or wounded. I mean, as long as it, ch it changed the odds in the, in the election. I don't know. I don't know gambling, so I think that's... Uh, but So that's possible, I suppose. The other is that it was a, uh, a real nut, a real, uh, a real uh, crazy blue. I mean, a, a, a very, very dedicated anti-green person who just hated him and wanted to kill him. Uh, I guess that's a possible possible scenario. Oh, I meant about Dr. Henry Lee. No, oh, about Henry Lee. Yeah. No, I don't know anything more about it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things he probably can't uh, he can't know. I mean, he can he can talk about the actual ballistics, the the that he was shot, that he was wounded. He can ascertain that as empirical knowledge. Uh, but what the I mean, it would be it would be very helpful if they caught the uh, attempted assassin. I mean, the, the would be assassin. That would be, you know, to find out what was going on and what was the reason. But uh, they seem to have made little headway in that regard. It's a strange thing. He seems to have vanished into thin air. Um, well, it's strange that, I mean, that, that he, he makes an attempted assassination attempt and nobody finds the guy. Uh, right in the middle, uh, right in the day, in the middle of the day, he comes out on the street and tries to shoot the, uh, the president of the country and gets, makes a clean getaway. Nobody, nobody finds him. It's just very, very strange. I've heard that they're not looking. <laughs> really? Yeah. Or, I mean, or, you know, maybe they say they are, but the, the consensus on the blue side is that there is not a really concerted effort. It's not an effort, huh? Yeah. It's more like they're 
they're defending themselves from these from the allegations for not catching him. No, That's not not for not catching them, for staging it. That they're, oh. they're, they're being defensive about, oh, like, I no, see. no, no, how could you say that? Blah blah blah. You know, it's uh. just impossible for this to be staged. Uh. You know, instead of like we're looking for the, you know, instead I of see. like the, this assass, this would be assassin seems to be forgotten about. I see. In, in the minds of both groups, in my opinion. Really? Yeah. yeah I see. So. Um, well, that's unfortunate because if that's true, then I don't think they'll ever, they'll ever get to the bottom of the whole thing, unless they find the guy. They find the guy, because there's a lot there are a lot of questions you can't answer unless you you have the perpetrator. The Surgeons or, or like you know um, wound experts have have stated that the wound is also suspicious um, and that they're not convinced that the president was actually shot at that during the rally. Yeah. Mm. And see, that seems to be like the, the mindset of people in the green side is that how could you stage that? It was, it's too risky to shoot someone like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's during a moving jeep. You know, it's ridiculous. How mm -hmm. could you say that? But mm -hmm. then, like, no, no, no. The, you know, once sort of the people in the blue side sort of put things together and, and thought beyond that um, s scheme or argument that it was like, wait a minute, was he really shot at that? Well, I understood that uh, uh, Henry Lee had said that, he, that they were gunshot wounds. That's what I had. That's what I had heard. I, I, I assume that it, that he was pretty good evidence for the fact that it was it was, it was yeah. a bullet wound. I don't know. Um, though we we're, we're just saying that like we believe he was shot before. Oh, I see. You know, with oh. like a air air rifle. Really? Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh. And that's why he was grazed. And the security guy also did not respond to uh, the bullet hole. I mean, there's a bullet hole right in front of him, and he's right. not throwing himself on the president or anything. Right. He's just not reacting. It's well, like, apparently he didn't even know he'd been shot. It was that was, it was part of what was so bizarre about the whole thing. Uh -huh. He didn't he, he didn't respond immediately to the fact that he'd been shot. I mean, he, he uh, people uh, detected a blood or something like that uh, a few minutes later. Uh, so it was uh, it was very bizarre the way it happened. Uh, 